when our universal love becomes very specific, typically that's personally motivated from somewhere mm -hmm. in our history. And then the departure of that or the loss of that, seeming loss of that, because again, there is no death, can mm -hmm. teach us, can reveal to us where previously that distortion was hiding because they still existed and we could just kind of blame it on them or we could project it into them or we could cover it up with uh, with a date night or we could cover it up with having a great experience or just embracing each other or whatever uh, or taking your dog for a walk but now that it's not there you, what's revealing itself is that the portion of your love that was made specific now it's just kind of left hanging because the object that it was projected into seems to not be there, at least on a physical sense, sensory level. On the Zoom call, anyone, feel free to raise the little virtual hand if you have a question. Like I said in this session, I'll prioritize when I see questions here over the people that are here in person. Thea. Um, how to most honorably work with states of grief? That's what was there. Have you got anything Beautiful. to say? Oh, <laughs> are you grieving, my love? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? My, um, <laughs> if my you want dog, to yeah, my dog died. But I knew she was due to, um, and I've had I had her mom and had her sister, and then and she she was the last of the, my dogs, the little dogs, and um, so there's a story there obviously, but she also chose to die on my hus husband's birthday, and we're separated, and I think. Yeah, so there's like, and also the day before I saw my mom and dad, and my dad's got six months left, you know, officially and all this stuff, and I can feel, I feel the connection with the, with the being this way beyond the body, you know, this also logically I get that, you know, and even if my husband decides he doesn't want to be married anymore, and not there and all this stuff, and so I kind of get it, you know, like, and I feel the connection anyway, but then what? Just crying and crying. <laughs> Just crying. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> While I tune into this, um, we will mute you for a moment just because there's some sounds coming through. Yeah. yeah. But do stay on the line. I will start with the more technical side of this, and then I'll move into the more human side of this. Okay. <laughs> so my technical analysis of grief, which is helpful to understand, it does help the human to connect to this, otherwise I wouldn't even bring it up. But just so you know, like, of course, I understand um, that it feels the way it feels and that it is as intense and real as it seems. So, but nevertheless, it helps us to connect to the way things, in a sense, really are more sort of metaphysically, technically speaking. In order to grieve, and this is what makes the human experience so unique, the incarnative process, because it really allows for this coming together of so many veiled states of perception about creation, about ourselves, about the nature of the soul, about the nature of ourselves and others, uh, nature of reality, that allows us to experience these afflictive states, uh, which are beneficial. So first of all, what you are going through is beneficial. It is actually 
adding greatly to the expansion of your soul and your awareness and your awakening also beyond this life. Even though beyond this life you wouldn't be grieving already, nevertheless, ironically, grieving here, having such an intense catalytic experience here to sift through, to experience, to figure out what to do with and so forth, that is actually adding to the expansion of your soul, even though your soul is already free of the perception of grief. So ironically, in some weird paradoxical way, you being here in this sort of veiled condition where you don't quite get to fully experience the interconnectedness, the eternity of everything, how there is no lack, how nobody can ever die, death doesn't exist, departure doesn't exist, separation doesn't exist. Ironically, being in that state, being so enmeshed in it, making it seem so real to ourselves through this incarnation, we are actually adding to the expansion and the learning and the even greater freedom at a soul level. So first of all, just know that you are being of service to yourself, your bigger self, by embarking upon this journey of the human experience and being willing to experience the grief and the suffering and all the nitty gritty things of abandonment and so forth. Um, yes, there is no death, it doesn't exist. There just really is no death. And it is almost only exclusively from this point of view of the physical body in a physical space-time environment, which is all sort of a construct within consciousness. It's not ultimately real. Within that illusion, within that veiled condition, it's also one of the few places or dimensions where we where we get to be so focused on a very tiny portion of time that we no longer seem to have access to what we would call the bigger perspective. The soul would call it the nonlinear perspective or that simultaneous awareness. But from our perspective here, anything that happens right now in the time span of, let's say, a week, even if you were to connect with somebody really intensely for a week and they would say, hey, I actually don't like you or like I don't want to be with you, it doesn't even have to be a husband for 30 years. It can be someone you just met intensely for a week. Like, it's only possible here to be so focused on this particular experience within the illusion of time to be grieving about what has been taken away, what has exited our direct perception, our physical perception of life. So we are in a very time-contracted focal point. We're very, very precise and specific here which allows for this unique experience that the soul cannot have at its higher dimensional levels because it, it doesn't experience that disconnect. It doesn't experience death. It knows there is no death. It's eternally there. It has access to so many perspectives and experiences and whichever being, whichever relationship from whichever lifetime it wishes to connect to, it's immediately there. It's immediately answered. The connection is immediately felt and explored in that moment. So from that state, we cannot experience what we can experience here. So first of all, that sort of analytical context of how grief is the result of not perceiving the unity and the non-death nature of things. So your dog didn't die. From this point of view, I would say your dog didn't die. None of your dogs have ever died. Also, technically, they've never been born. <laughs> but just like you have never been born, they have projected a portion of their soul into that experience to, within this video game world, interact with your video game character, have a unique, intensified, meaningful experience that you get to distill and learn from on such a specific level, which subconsciously transfers back to the soul's expansion, the soul's learning. So that's the service. That's why we choose to come here because it actually expenses at an accelerated pace that we cannot accomplish at a soul level. So again, the context for grief is that it's a positive, even though it's a negative experience, because the emotional guidance system is letting us know that our perspective is not aligned with source. But in this reality, in this particular dimension, it seems so convincing that we get to have a realistic feeling experience 
with separation and loss and abandonment and no longer experiencing someone or something and so forth, or feeling like lost and not supported and whatever else comes with that. So I could even just leave it at that and say, it's going perfectly according to your plan. <laughs> and um, you, are, you are adding to the expansion of your soul just like you intended to. And this is what it feels like right now. And this too shall pass, as all things do. And this allows you to realize something very, very precise and specific about yourself on a deeper level. Because of this intense catalytic external experience, you will be motivated to dive deeply within, most likely, and to find the solace in a true place. And to be able to do that, to will yourself into that, to invite yourself into that, from a dimension of separation and limitation like this is, remarkably adds to the expansion of your soul, which is your truest desire. So it's all going according to plan. Um, unfortunately, I cannot say, you know, it shouldn't have happened, but I don't think he would want me to. But grief technically is the perception, the belief that something is lost. We can uh, unmute her. Or she can unmute herself either way. Just seeing how this lands so far. It that's landing. <laughs> and I definitely do feel that weird, like kind of um, like it's a really weird intimacy with the intimacy with the illusion. So it's like I kind of I can feel both really strongly at the moment, I guess. Like the connection and the illusion of separation. It's really mm -hmm. heightened, it is heightened, very heightened right now. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That, that that actually means you're quite aware, you're quite awake to the spiritual mm -hmm. level because mm -hmm. that is what, what heightens the intimacy feeling inside of the grief. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what causes the expansion at a soul level is to have that simultaneous depth and intimacy. That's actually the goal of this is to is to experience that deep intimacy of the simultaneity of it and to come to an acceptance of that within yourself. Wow. And the more, the more you experience these moments of grief, not mm -hmm. saying you should create more of them, but... <laughs> they happen. <laughs> I see you living a very happy and abundant life. But... Oh. Um, but the more we experience our catalytic experiences, even if they're less intense than, you know, losing your dog and, and having um, your father's diagnosis and uh, perhaps your husband's departure and so forth from your relationship and having all that at once, um, even lesser catalytic experiences, which we do experience on an ongoing basis, the more we allow ourselves to find the intimacy, the perfection in that, the acceptance of that, the paradox in that, the bitter sweetness, you could say, in a human way, it's the bitter sweetness it can give us access, can give us access to both the liberation of it as well as the pain of it, and we can we can intend to pain. Um, are we still connected? She's yep. freezing up a little bit. And do you still hear me, Thea? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, yes, I do. So it's be I'm happy to hear you say that you already actually have an access to the simultaneity, that it's not only grief and it's not only, hey, look at that. <laughs> Did you buy a cat the following day? Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> and also this actually it's a beautiful messenger just now the cat coming in the screen because one other one other great gateway when we're in, <laughs> one other great gateway when we're in grief is to that can help us get out of the sort of limited view that we have that feels so dense is to see how much else there is to connect to and to be grateful for that really life hasn't stopped at all yeah. It hasn't, uh, there's no disconnect. There is so much to be grateful for. And we get so, we get so 
honed in on specifics, specific people, specific mm -hmm. events, specific animals, mm -hmm. specific identities, which the animals don't share so much. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Animals, <laughs> they are. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> they don't care, showing their butthole for the camera. <laughs> Oh, you human, you get so specific. <laughs> um, so that's beautiful. Like you can, you can use your mm -hmm. lovely cat. What is or her name? Ziggy. 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 Nice. Ziggy. Yeah. Ziggy. So. Allow your love to become more universal through this experience would be my suggestion of anything. So it's going to, according to plan, it's perfect. And I think the way that you can extract even more benefit from this situation mm -hmm. is to commit yourself to making your love more universal and less specific. Yeah. And you may find it may be where it gets a little bit confronting with the self, the beliefs might be that you realize one of the reasons why your love is so specific mm -hmm is because of a fear of abandonment that started somewhere. Mm. Um, this goes for many of us. So because of that fear of abandonment, we tend to project a lot of our universal love, our open heart kind of becomes like a flashlight or a laser beam it becomes very direct, like you, you are the one I love, or this, this animal is the one I have a bond with. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But try to soften that with more spaciousness, with more radiance instead of specificness just radiate in all directions realize mm -hmm. the love when you walk in nature for everything that you see every blade of grass every leaf on the tree every root system um every cat in your environment mm -hmm. and begin to really experience <coughs> or extract or get to know or discern between the universal aspect of the love that is so strong in you mm -hmm. versus the specific projection of that love into a form which might be more motivated by the early child personality construct mm. that's still with us today. Yes. And it's that fear, it's that hope, it's that fear of abandonment, not being good enough, whatever it is, you know, all these kinds of things, which are valid. Mm. But if we understand that when our universal love becomes very specific, typically that's personally motivated from somewhere mm. in our history. And then the departure of that or the loss of that, seeming loss of that, because again, there is no death, can mm. teach us can reveal to us where previously that distortion was hiding because they still existed and we could just kind of blame it on them or we could project it into them or we could cover it up with uh, with a date night or we could cover it up with having a great experience or just embracing each other or whatever uh, or taking your dog for a walk. But now that it's not there, you, what's revealing itself is that the portion of your love that was made specific now it's just kind of left hanging because the object that it was projected into seems to not be there, at least on a physical sense, sensory level. So you get to really take that portion back, look at it and see, oh, this is not actually pure love. This was my own personal hope, which I do need to love. I do need to embrace it with pure love, but it was a distortion of love. It was a hope for love. It was an attachment for certainty or security or belonging or being loved or being seen or being important or so forth. And then the more we soften that through those grief experiences, through accepting the bittersweetness of life and not getting too specific too often when we're in a grieving state, remember to expand, go for a walk in nature, start appreciating the things around you again so that that life force can come back. Even in this 3D world, that life force can stream back into you. Appreciate the cat, love the shit out of your cat, like, but everything and start expanding that into a radiant space and then the passion and intensity that you projected into this what's now causing a grief experience because the object of your love seems to not be there at least to your physical senses you can use that to open the heart chakra completely to that universal love and purify and heal and forgive the personal conditioning in the process can we unmute her Yeah, thank you. That makes so much sense. Like, really mm -hmm. makes so much sense. But I guess I feel really radically different as well about it. So thank you. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. 
Mm. Right. And it's okay if you go kind of back and forth, specific, <laughs> extensive. And that is what's actually adding to the expansion of your soul. And then I know it's a rough ride, but, um, but it doesn't last forever. It is short moments, short periods. And they give you so much. Like after this whole period has softened completely, also in the long run, your heart's going to be so much more open and universal in its love. Mm. And you're going to be much closer to the creator in your own direct experience. Amazing. Yeah. So Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing. <laughs>